Hi again. Welcome to Moose Jaw This Week. I'm Lyle Johnson, your host. And today we're going to be talking to Christian Schoberg from the Moose Jaw Gaming Association. And uh, they do some really good things in our community. And uh, we're going to talk about the one that's going to happen this year, finally, after a two-year hiatus. So, Christian, welcome to the program. Hi, Lyle. Thank you for having me. Now, let's just go over the history of, of what the Moose Jaw Gaming Association is and what they do to uh, generate some funds for some pretty deserving organizations. Go ahead. Um, yeah, well, we're, uh, we're just a group of nerds who like to have fun. And we like to play video games, card games, board games. And 13, 14 years ago, we started out uh, in a guy's basement, just getting together and having a weekend of fun. And after that weekend, we had some funds left over because we had kind of a admission fee. And ever since then, we've grown to this huge, wonderful gaming expo that we have now, um, where we raise funds for different children's charities. Uh, this year, um, we're focusing on Creative Kids, um, which is an arts grant program for kids all around the province. And so that's kind of what we're doing this year. Um, getting bigger and better as always. We've got more events coming this year. We've got cosplayers coming to the event that people can get pictures with, um, more miniatures, all kinds of stuff happening this year. Well, let's talk about some of the games that people are eligible to participate in because, uh, you know, you have a huge collection. We uh, and do. It's like a, an all-day, all-night event. We do. And, yes, it is. Uh, fe February 4th to 6th. So it's all day Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, we've got a group of uh, our local nerds here that bring their library of board games, which can be – there's thousands to choose from. Um, we do have a former uh, game store owner. He's bringing down a whole bunch of Xboxes with TVs so that people can uh, don't even have to bring their consoles. They can come down and uh, play on the consoles that are there. Uh, we have a, uh, a LAN area where people bring their, do bring their own PCs and they play their own games with you know friends that they know, friends they don't know, they meet new friends. Um, we play role-playing games like Dungeons and Dragons, which would be right up your alley, uh, Lyle. It's all drama and faking it. Yeah, I was a. I played D and D a, a, a few times. I was a a, a dwarf. Um, <laughs> a dwarf uh, fighter or something. My character was a, a dwarf warrior <laughs> or something. I, I, quite, I, I quite, was kind of cool. Quite yeah. contradictory to your actual personality. I, exactly. I because I'm not a dwarf. I I. I, I more than more than I don't know what the definition is, but I'm six foot four, so yeah. it uh, makes it a little difference out. But it's fun. It's fun to do that role oh, play, and, and we have that. We have those hosted throughout the whole weekend by um, like professional game masters who, um, you know, take five or six people into a room and they tell a story, and the players get to tell their story and and be a part of the world that's being created, and that's yeah. really what it is. It's it's almost like improv that you used to do with us in high school. Like it's. Yeah. Well, and, and if anybody watches uh, the big bang theory, of course, it's a, an integral part of their, of their characters. It, it is. Uh, and, it, and it's an integral part of our culture. It's one of the few places that nerds and geeks can get together and become a persona that they can't normally do in their daily lives. So it gives them this outlet of, of escapism. So it, it's, it's a ton of fun. And we have people who are have do have done this for forty years, and we have people who have done it. This is their first day, and they just want to come out and try it. Um, so there's there's lots of stuff to do, lots of activities. Um, the admission for the weekend is only twenty dollars, and that's the whole weekend. Um, so I mean, there's there's tons of stuff to do, and not a lot. It doesn't cost you a lot to come out and do it. Yeah, now it's this is a, uh, one location too. This isn't virtual. This is actually you show up. So where do they hold it? So we are uh, we are actually we've hold, held it the last couple of years at the Moose Jaw Cultural Center, home of the May Wilson, uh, right in downtown Moose Jaw. They have a whole bunch of conference rooms and uh, theater rooms that we uh, take over the whole place basically, and we uh, we have. Uh, stuff in the basement, in the rehearsal rooms. That's where a lot of the miniatures and stuff happen. Um, it's just uh, we descend on the cultural center and take over every square inch. So 
it's a lot of well, fun. that's for sure. Now, of course, electronic games is a big part of it, and and mm -hmm. uh, uh, but tell me about the board games. I'm uh, how does how does that work? Well, we uh, with the board games we typically set up in the main lobby, so there's a bunch of round tables set up, um, and then we've got uh, Fenner's Phantasmal. Uh, oh, I forget now. He's our he's our board game guru, and uh, he brings uh, a whole bunch of board games from his collections. Um, and if people want certain ones or certain types, he can he just runs home and grabs extra ones. Um, but he has all these board games that people can come and try out. Um, they will let uh, he will coach them on how to play the games if it's something difficult. Um, he quite often will just step in and play with people as well. So, uh -huh. um, so do you get to do any gaming yourself, or are you just running around making sure that everybody, everybody else is having fun? I try to sneak in a few hours here and there. Um, most of our volunteers uh, have. We 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 always are looking for more volunteers, um, but uh, most of our volunteers usually have about four to six hours throughout the weekend. That they have to volunteer but then the rest of the time is theirs um most of our executive it's kind of we have four hours of our own time that we can play yeah. and the rest of the weekend we're running around like chickens with our heads cut off <laughs> what kind of numbers are we talking here christian um well previously in uh, 2019 we had had uh, about 150 to 200 in the 2019 and 2020 winter gags that we had had um we're thinking it's going to be quite a bit bigger this year simply because of everyone being locked down for two years. Uh, this is one of the first nerd events happening on any of the gaming expos. So this is one of the first uh, events to happen anywhere thinking, in Western Canada. So I'm thinking you're going to get a lot of response because people have been cooped up for a we long really, time. Now, have, what, kind of, uh, what kind of qualifications physically must a person do like uh, uh vaccines we and yeah so. we're following the same provincial guidelines uh, so anything like this yeah you either have to come fully vaccinated um with your vaccination card or um we're we're at this point uh 72 hour negative test for uh covid um but though we're just following provincial guidelines as far as that goes so because we are in an enclosed space it's also a civic building which also has those requirements so wow that's good because you know, it's because you can get pretty intense and you're, and you're in not closed quarters but you're no. in with a lot of people that you might not ever know so you, right. you want right. to make sure that you follow the rules yeah, and, and, uh, and we've got extra, like the uh, cultural center has extra cleaning protocols in place. We also have all of our executive, uh, all of our executive are wearing masks, gloves. Uh, when they go around, they're doing, we're doing a, basically a one hour cycle where we're walking around the whole cultural center and wiping down all common surfaces. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's, yes, there's extra to involved in that, but it's nothing that we haven't got used to in the last two years. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's become part of our culture. It, it has. So it's, you know, uh, like I say, the you want to go out to eat, same sort of thing. You got to show us your vaccine card. Um, even our, uh, our, our supper buffet that we have on uh, food. Saturday. There's food? Yes, Saturday, included in your $20 is, yeah. the, I know, right, is uh, a pizza party. Um, typically, we used to do it as a buffet. We just lay out. Yeah, uh, big, yeah family big. family pizza donated like eight or nine hundred dollars worth of pizzas, and we would just lay those out on the table. Well, due to the pandemic, we've kind of got to change that a little bit. So we've changed that from a buffet, but we'll have uh, fully masked up with face shields and everything. People just handing the pizza out. Oh, serving so it out. Yeah. We'll yeah, we'll have it behind us uh, on a table. People can ask for which pizza they want. But we're still going ahead with the pizza party, which has been a large part of the gaming expo now. Oh, gosh. Family Pizza has been our sponsor for that, I think, for five or six years. Like, he's he's donated pizzas to us, which is unbelievable because that saves us and, and, and draws in more people. You know, 20 bucks for a weekend, you get a pizza party, you get, you know, gaming the whole weekend. I mean, even if it's just Saturday night, 20 bucks for a date night, hey, it's a cheap date. Oh, yeah, it's a, it's a great deal. Yeah. yeah, come down, play board games, 
place. But now, is, it, is the food served all night long? Because you're playing all night long? Or? Uh, well, no, we typically try to, we try uh, our schedule for that Saturday evening, we, we try to leave a little bit of a gap from okay. six to eight. So, so people can still play their games and stuff and come and go and get their pizza and go back to their area. Um, but nothing's scheduled for the RPGs. Nothing is scheduled for any of the tournaments until after the supper, so uh, or before during the day. So it's it. We try to leave that as an opening for people so that they can so kind of socialize a little bit. How do people get involved with this and, and plan in their schedule? So how do they do that? Well, absolutely. Uh, they can uh, reach out to us through any of our social medias. Um, Moose Jaw Gamers is what you would look, uh, or you can go straight to our website, which is mjga.ca. Uh, they can reach out to us through any of that uh, internet-based goodies. Um, we are pretty quick to respond. They can register on our website, like pre-register, which helps us kind of plan for numbers too. Um, and there is a $50 gift card that they can win if uh, they pre-register ahead of time. So, you know, you could pay 20 bucks for your registration and get 50 bucks back. <laughs> That's not a bad, not a, not a sound business practice, but it sure sounds good to, to have fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, Christian, thanks for taking us through this. I know that, uh, as you said, there was a hunt, like 150 last time, and I wouldn't be surprised you far exceed that because um, people want to, they want to do something. Well, and, they do. Uh, and the fact that you're able to, to bring this up safely for them to participate is a really good thing. So congratulations to you guys for your continued perseverance to make this happen for people. Thank you very much, Lyle. And we look forward to it being our biggest and best ever and providing a lot of uh, funds this year, like I said, to creative kids, which, I mean, that's right up both mine and your alley with yeah, the art yeah. and drama and dance and sing. You know, to be able to do that for kids who can't necessarily afford those things is is quite a, it's quite an honor to be able to do. And, and all that funds is actually going to stay in the moose jaw kind of section of the creative kids. So any kids that apply in Moose Jaw will draw from what we raise here. So we're okay. very excited. And well, Christian, thank you for joining us today. I'm back to work and, and <laughs> hope you get caught up in all the things that you have in the schedule for today. But again, February? February 4th, 5th, and 6th uh, in 2020. So coming up just uh, just shortly yeah. here. And Moose Jaw Gamers. So, uh, Get in yeah, there yeah. And, uh, and and have some have some good fun doing things that you love to do. Absolutely, Chris everyone is welcome, all ages, um, all identifications. We are friendly to everyone, and we just like to have fun. Okay, thanks very much, and uh, thanks for taking time to join us today. So uh, we we'll look forward to seeing you and others on Moose Show this week.